very complicated plastic part that came off of a saw. And what I'm doing here is creating a mold. And we're right now I'm making a parting line out of tape because that's all we have. Technically, we should be using something, probably maybe some packing, so we can uh, make the parting line wider so it actually fits in this thing. See, it needs to be a little wider. In the tin alloy. And it's for a saw, actually. It was made out of plastic and it broke right here. And I repaired it once, but it just keeps breaking, so I'm just. Uh, we're going to make it over again, but this time with the metal, which will be stronger. Okay, what we're doing here is making some standoffs for the part so that it stays off of the bottom when we pour in the um, plaster of Paris. And the easiest way to do it is to just drill some holes in the bottom and then tape the hole shut. Make a little U-hook deal. This. This will keep the part from falling on the bottom, see? We'll do that on both sides. Okay, so we'll fill up the bottom of this thing and just seal in there. Okay, we're just going to let it sit. I don't know how long you got to let it sit. Unfortunately, for these next bits after this, you'll see that so we uh, lost microphone, so I'll have to do some improvising here and explain what happened. Okay, what we're doing here is taking the mold apart, and you can see at the top half of the mold just fell apart where the cellophane tape acted as a parting line. It's exactly what we wanted to have happen. And uh, what you'll see next is that we will have to try to extract the part out of the top of the tool. And because a part doesn't have any draft or angles to it, it's very difficult to get out of the tool and you see it's actually breaking the tool apart. That did present a little bit of a problem, it's not ideal, but we can still work around that. So what we do, at, what we're going to do next after this, after we get the part completely out of there, is glue it together. Together we literally use Elmer's glue to glue the, uh, the part back together. So you see here we're trying to extract the part or scraping and so on and uh, finally we'll get the part out it takes a lot of finesse work to get it apart and see this part that part broke off it's not ideal but that's how we uh, manage to get it apart the next part no you see we'll get the part completely extracted from the mold takes a lot of wiggling and finesse work to get it apart. So we finally got it out. You have to be very gentle with it and all those bits that fell out of there will come back and haunt us a little bit when we actually make the part when we mold it. So what we're going to do next is start gluing it all together. We'll use Elmer's type glue to glue it together and uh, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle now so we'll slap the parts together like this and uh, what you see here is we, we glued it together and now we're actually taking play-doh and sealing up all cracks on the tool because if you don't do that the bismuth tin alloy will flow right through flow right through any crack that exists there. So we're we're taking our time here and smashing it together with a Play-Doh, trying to fill up every crack that we've got. 
So here we're finishing that up and uh, in the next scene here we're going to be adding you know, the finishing touches to all the Play-Doh on there. Okay, here we are uh, getting ready to uh, pour the uh, the bismuth tin alloy. Basically, bismuth tin is a uh, I think it's a mixture of lead and bismuth. It's a low melting alloy, and basically, what we're doing here is we're heating it up. You can see it's liquid; it doesn't take much. This uh, melts at 185 degrees. There's some 255 degree stuff, but we're not using that. We're using 185 degree. And you can see it's pretty much liquid in the bottom of that coffee can. Used to be coffee can, probably a bean can, I don't remember. And so now we're going to pour it into the mold that we made. And um, it pours pretty quickly. Stuff's like water. See it comes up and it filled up the whole tool. And we'll let it sit for about 10 minutes to cool down and uh, once we come back to it then we'll start cracking the mold apart, breaking off the pieces to get at it, get at it. And you'll see that there's going to be a lot of flashing because some of the material melted in through the uh, parting line. You'll see that in just a moment when we split it apart. We pop the bottom half of the tool off. I think I was having a little trouble because actually the the bismuth and the tin bismuth tin alloy kind of bonded to the uh, al to the uh, plaster of Paris. I was able to bust it apart. We can see there's a big flash line and so then I had to bust it apart with a screwdriver. It took almost 20 minutes to get this thing down to where we needed to be able to get at it and I didn't want to break the part so you have to be real careful how you're breaking off all this material. You have to be very ginger about it. So we're showing some of the some of the toil that we went through to get it apart, you can see that flashing line right there in the middle, which is basically a big flat bit of um, bismuth tin. It's, it's about, yeah, there we are. So now we're digging out all the pieces inside. And uh, next you'll see that we have to get rid of all the flashing, you have to crack it off and make it actually look like a part. So we're trying to get rid of all this plaster of Paris out of it. That's the first chore. Once we get that all out then we'll start refining it and uh, whittling off bits. As you see there I've done quite a lot of work. I probably put about 20 minutes worth of work and what we're doing here is fitting it into a saw. And this was actually a saw release uh, lever and uh, it had broken before because it was made out of plastic. It's a very cheap part and so I was having some fit up issues with the rod it was not fitting in there so we had to file it numerous times to get it to actually fit. And in the final review at the end, which we'll get here in a minute, you'll see that um, the part fits a lot fits exactly the way it should. So I had to do a lot of filing. This is what I'm doing here, filing off. So here it is in assembled, showing it fully functioning. It uh, indexes the, uh, the saw head and um, there it is. So from the top view, it looks decent. It looks like it's supposed to be a part, and it's a lot more durable than the plastic part. And should probably never actually fall apart again. Thanks for watching.